Hi everybody, this is Roxy, and I have a little project I'm working on. I am tea dyeing some tags, and so what I do is I, and it's super easy, um, I just get, you know, some really boiling hot water, and then what I use is instant coffee, or just like my coffee grounds from my Keurig, you know, I use one of those reusable Dollar Tree things for my coffee. You can also use tea bags. With tea bags, I put about, like in this size um, water, I would probably put three tea bags because you really want to get some nice color. So I've had these soaking for a while, and these are um, a box of tags that I found at a garage sale for, no, it was at uh, Goodwill, I think, for 49 cents maybe or something. Um, it was full. But you can get these at um, any office supply store. Uh, probably even Dollar Tree has some, but I'm not sure. I know Walmart does, for sure. Oh, I can't open this dumb thing. What the heck? So anyways. Jeez. So I've cut... Okay, so what I want to do when I'm done with these, I bought these sweet little books. I'll tell the long story later, but I bought these sweet little books by this poet and illustrator um, at a garage, at, well, no, I bought one book at a garage sale. Okay, I'll just tell you now. We were at a garage sale, and this couple was selling all their stuff. They're downsizing because they're hitting 60, and that's what people do when they hit 60. And so or what you should do, because otherwise when you die, you got all this crap that nobody wants. So um, she collected Joan, Wash, Joan Walsh Angland um, statues and books and all things Joan Walsh England. And she is still alive. She's about 90-some years old. This woman actually contacted her and, you know, just wanted to learn more about her. And I want to say she lives in Chicago. Don't quote me on that. Anywho, um, I bought... Bill actually had purchased some of those Joan Walsh England little statues. They kind of look like, um, well, okay, when I saw it at first, I thought, oh, my gosh, because she was saying how she couldn't sell any of it. She goes, the last time I tried, nobody would buy it. And I go, well, how long ago was that? She goes, oh, about 10 years ago. And I go, well, you try again, because these things look exactly like gorgeous girls. I'm not kidding. In fact, I pulled one up on my phone and showed her, and she goes, oh, my gosh, you're not kidding. And so... She's going to try to sell the rest on Etsy or Craigslist. Or, I mean, I told her I told her Etsy or eBay. So she said she's going to give that a try. But anyway, so Bill, he actually used to buy these statues for his sister because they reminded him of her kids, you know, because they all had little round faces. And, um, in fact, the one that she had sitting there, uh, was one that he had purchased for his sister, and she had really good prices on them. I want to say like eight bucks, and they're worth a lot more. And so he bought he bought one of those, and I think it was the beach one. I'll show a picture of that at some point in this video. It's her poetry is okay. So never mind. I forgot. So I saw this book. I didn't even pay attention. It was just a really cute little book. And I'll show that when I get doing this. And it was like a little kid book. So it was $2. And I thought, I'll just cut it up and use pictures and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Until I found out that this is part of her, this was part of her collection of books. Because this gal, this Joan Walsh Anglin, also illustrated children's books. So now we're just putting these out to dry. So I got that book and then got home and I got on Wikipedia and learned more about Joan Walsh and um, saw some of her prose. I went on Amazon. She has these sweet little books. They used to sell them for like $1.75. I'm sure I've seen them in Hallmark. And I think this was like, her books were printed in 1968. So I know I saw them when I was growing up. And the prose is just so lovely and so sweet. And so 
I had to get on, I found like, I found a couple on thrift books for $3.97 and then I found a few on Etsy. They were selling like a lot of three of them for $10. Bucks. Um, so, okay, now here I'm going to do this. So I just bought a bunch of them and long story short, I'm going to type some of her little poems on these tags. But to do that, I have to cut off these strings. So I'll just have to restring them later. But isn't that a crazy little segue? So that's what I'm doing. So again, just to tea dye your... Oh, and then what I like to do, and I don't have any right now, when they're drying like that, sometimes I'll put some of the coffee, the wet coffee grounds, sprinkle them all over the tags or whatever the paper I'm um, doing. Because then you get kind of some little model effects. Where's my spoon? There. Super easy project. But they kind of, and then I like how they kind of crinkle up when they dry. I think I'm going to do this this mini. So I'll save these for later in case I want tags with strings. Okay. So I'm going to let see how they curl. So I'll let these sit, and then once they're dry, I'll I'll either come back or I'll come back after I've typed on them. Depends on if I remember or not. <laughs> but I'll be back. Okay, so here's the little book I thought I might as well just do this. Here's the little book I found. Isn't it cute? It's missing the little dial, but it's just sweet. And she wrote and illustrated this. Oh no, I guess not. Pictures by Joan Walsh. It sounds like her kind of prose, but evidently not. But see, I thought I could just use these, but look at her illustration. Isn't that cute? Just love it. Very sweet. I look I'm gonna look at these so differently now. Because it's like, yeah, somebody actually illustrated these books. You know, I mean, you don't really think of it. You like the illustration, but look at how cute the dog is. And then when you see her other books, you'll, you'll recognize. They sure like showing a girl's underwear. But, <laughs> isn't that cute? So... Then when I got looking at Wikipedia, this is the first book she wrote, A Friend is Someone Who Likes You. And okay, this is really bizarre. I just got this yesterday and this was from an Etsy seller. And they have these at Thrift Books, but they only had reprinted editions and I wanted the vintage ones. And these are the original printing. Um, and this book, she um, she had some kids, and she watched, okay, after a recent move to a new home, Mrs. Anglin watched her own small daughter's adjustment, and from that experience came her first book, which is this. But get this, I can't read all of what is said here, but it says, from Roxy Summeris or something. And it's spelled R-O-X-Y like I spell my name. 1964. But I can't read. It almost says it's bread. Or white. No, one wheat. I don't know. One white wheat. And a special holiday. Something loaf. Be gentle when you. French bread. I don't know. So I don't know who wrote this. I kind of want to go back. I want to go back to um, the garage sale and just see if I can knock on their door and ask her more about this. Because I'm sure she's got all these in her home. But anyways, here is the sweetest book you'll ever read. A friend is someone who likes you. Isn't that cute? It can be a boy, it can be a girl, it can be 
or a cat or a dog I can't read because I don't make glasses. Or even a little white mouse or just a white mouse. Isn't that cute? Look at this. And then you can also buy some vintage um, lithographs of her prints that are vintage. They're, they run about $12 and it was a sample book that she must have sold. I think one of these, this was in it. Isn't that great? I love this. Sometimes you don't know who your friends, who are your friends. Sometimes they are there all the time, but you walk right past them and don't notice that they like you in a special way. Isn't that sweet? Oh, I love it. And then I found out, here's another one. Do you love someone? Love is a special way of feeling. Then I read that, and this was, I don't know if this, this wasn't Wikipedia, I don't think. But I read that um, a line from this book, or let me see, I have to find it. A line from this book is, is being attributed to Maya Angelou, who, yeah, did not write it. And I think Barack Obama attributed it to Maya Angelou, and it's actually this gal who wrote it way before, what year is this? 1964, but it's a bird does not sing because he has an answer. He sings because he has a song. And I know I've seen people, like I don't know if Tim Holtz has a stamp like that. Somebody does, and they don't attribute it to her. And I want to say they attribute it to Maya Angelou. But anyways, and I love Maya Angelou, don't get me wrong. But, um... Isn't that nice? I mean, it's just such beautiful. Isn't that cool? No, oh, that's kind of sad. But it is forever. Isn't that cute? I just love it. I love pros like that. So, I don't know, you know, I mean, I'm kind of off on a little tangent here, but if you come across any of her stuff, and now that I see it, I know I've seen it in antique stores, you know, different places, so. Um, and also you can get it on eBay, you can get it more inexpensively on um, thrift books if you don't mind getting the uh, reprinted ones, or reproduced ones. So, I will be back with the rest of my project. Okay, so I have all my little tags and I love how they get kind of crunkly and crispy and curly and get kind of, you know, damaged a little bit. Some of them I put drips of coffee on top. So I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of early, early morning here in the furlong house. So now, I don't know if this is going to bug the camera, but I'm typing all my little sentiments on here. And trust me, I'm making typos. Some of them I'm leaving. Um, just because it kind of, like this one, it didn't space right because this got stuck at the thing up here. And I, I just think that kind of adds to it. But you also can be perfect. And this one kind of ran off towards the right, but it's fine. I love this. I think she wrote, I gotta see what year this is. I gotta believe that was after Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah, 64 was when she first published it, so I've gotta believe that this is about, you know, just after his speech. You know, because I don't think she would plagiarize something, but I just think it. she was inspired by it. But I just love it. It's so neat. So nice. So, all right. So this is, um, I got this last year at a garage sale from some hippie from California. 
living over on Chicago Avenue in Minneapolis. And his house, like they have a lot of cool bungalows over in Minneapolis. And his house actually was Spanish Revival, which is very California. So, and he talked like those surfer dudes, but he was just kind of an, probably in his 70s, you know, maybe late 60s, early 70s. But he was a really cool guy and he just had his yard full of stuff. And he had this for 15 bucks and it, everything on it works perfectly. Plus it's this pretty blue color. This is a Smith Corona Coronet Super 12. And it is in beautiful condition. Probably from the early 70s. I've got the case for it. Even all the paperwork. Rules of operation, the booklets. Everything that came with it, even the, um, you know, like the registration, look at this, everything. So that's kind of cool, cool ephemera to either keep with the machine, which I probably will. Um, I bought a turquoise manual, Royal Last, like two years ago, and I can't remember how much I paid for that. Um, but this was 15 bucks, if I haven't said it already. And I, you know, last time I checked eBay, they ran about fifteen, twenty dollars, all the way up, and um, at least to like ninety or I've, I saw some for one hundred and fifty plus shipping. So even like the fifteen or twenty or thirty dollar ones, you're going to spend that much more on shipping. Um, plus those lower priced ones. Um, weren't in working order, complete working order. Um, like maybe the keys worked, but not everything worked. So um, just kind of when you're going to buy one, just be careful that you really check it out. Or if there's things that don't work on it and you don't care, that's fine. Anyway, so I turn the baby on. And I start right off with the wrong letter. Oh, see? Got to pay attention. This is how I craft. It's all day long like this. My whole... Little, okay. So there's that. If there's any typos, don't say anything. No, there isn't. So then I'm just going to um, put different ribbon or string on here. I'm thinking of using the Dollar Tree string because I really like its um, vintage look and feel to it. It's really, to me, it just is very vintagey. So I probably will do that. It depends on how... Um, if it looks too thick for this. So, I don't know if you want me to do another one, but I'll just quick do another one. You gotta check out this Joan Walsh angle now. I just, oh, her poetry is so beautiful. Oh, this is nice. This is gonna be a tough one for me though, because it's long. Okay. Barely see. Can you see what I'm typing? Not really. 
I'll show it when I'm done here. Now see, this is where it gets caught. So I gotta give it a little jizz. See, it's a little off, but it's okay. Like all good teachers, the world repeats her lesson over and her over with wordless variety. She spells the name of love. Isn't that pretty? So, oh, and here's a trick. Um, let me think. <clears throat> I gotta find a small one. Um, okay, I'll just tell you how to do it. So you want to put your margins, you know, once you get your margins set, right? And if you want to, um, uh, if there's a poem where it needs to be centered, this is how you do it. You find your margins where you want, you know, put them where you want them. And once you get this through, you space to the center and, you know, put a tab in the center. And then when you're doing, um, say, a line like every tier, you backspace one space for every two letters. And that'll, and then start typing, and that will center it. Um, I don't know if I've got. I don't want to make a big, huge. Here, I'll try this one. Okay, so here's my left tab. Am I over here? Fine. Maybe I'll put this on this side. Oops, I lost my little flamingo. If I could wear this camera on my chest, I would. So I'm going to try this. Like that. So I'm gonna, oops. Yeah, I want to kind of get the keyboard into it. Okay, so... Here's the left margin, right? Can't backspace anymore. And then we go to the right margin. Okay, that's exactly where I want it. So then I backspace to the center. And I can find the center by the center of this tag. Otherwise you would, you know, just go like that. So I can put a um, tab here. I think that's a tab. Where's my tab things? There, there's my tab. Okay. So now, my first line is every tier. So I'm going to backspace E, B, P, e, R, Y space, T, E, A, R. Okay. And then go back to my mark, my tab. I space E V E R space C R I E D. That's the next line. And then go back to my tab. T U R N E D space T zero. No O space P E A R L. You don't do the last. There's last an odd number. Okay. So there's that first stanza. And see, I could have spaced it like she has it, but I just don't have enough width here. If I had a little bit bigger tag, I would. All right, now. In space M E space B U R N E D. Oops. Hang it in. F O R G E D space T O space W I S D O M.
I space H A D space E A R N E D. Oops. See how I oops there. I don't really mind those little typos. I think it adds to it. Because, okay, I'll tell you why. My mom used to type out all her recipes. Because when she was, I think when she graduated from high school, I have her typewriter. She got a, let me think, yeah, it would have been, yeah, because she was born in 1915. And she graduated from high school because she has a 1934 um, I think it's a royal. I haven't seen it for a while. It's down in my art lair. But I have her typewriter. I'm so happy to have it. And she used to type out all her recipes when she, you know, probably before she had kids and had five kids running around. But anyways, she'd have little typos like that. And I, I just kind of liked that of it. You know, it, it wasn't perfect. It was, you know, imperfect like we all are. And I kind of like that better. That's kind of how I craft too. It's I'm not I don't try to sweat the perfection of it all because I think that's when and some people do and that, that's I'm not a perfect person. I don't try to be perfect in anything because I, I know I can't. I can't achieve that, and I really don't care that I can't achieve it. And I know some people that is who they are, and that's perfect. You know, and that's and then that's why we need them. Because we need to see perfection. <laughs> so we can try to attain it in some way. But um, anyways, I'm babbling. But I like the imperfections of life, I guess. So there's that one. That is how you center. Okay. And it doesn't look... See, this one kind of screwed it up. But it, it's how you center. I, oh, I love these. They're just so good. Here's, how oh, pretty is this? Mmm, beautiful. So, I hope you can find some of her books if you enjoy this. I just think it's beautiful and they're, you know, I mean, I was going to buy these books because I got them for kind of a good price. And I thought, well, I'll just cut them out and use them. And I'm like, ooh, I can't. No, I've got to, I got to keep them because they are first editions that I found which I don't think is very hard to do, so. Um. Alrighty, so I've gotten to this point. Um, okay, so what I did, I typed out all my little things. Anyways, um, so then I used this little punch. I don't even know who makes it. I think I got it at a, I'm sure I got it at a garage sale. But it's just a tiny little flower punch. And I glued it over the hole, and then, let's see, that's, I gotta cover the back. And then I just looked through and centered it on the hole. And then, used my smaller, what is that, a quarter inch? Eighth of an inch punch. And then, um, going through the back, lined it up with the hole and punched it. And then I just used the Dollar Tree string. I love this string. It's just really cottony and organic and because it is cotton string, which is nice. And I made little, I had a long loop, but I just didn't, I don't know, it just kind of bothered me. So I made them little and I really like the smaller loop on these tags. So here they are. And then I just used a couple PK Success Punches, that one with the hearts, and zigzag, and then this one with the little scallop and dots, so, and just scrap, got into my scrap bin. So some of these have boo-boos on the back, these ones. Um, I think these are, yeah, these are still good. I don't know why I didn't tie a string on that yet. But anyways, so that's, and then these you can just, you know, hang on a 
gift bag or just give it to somebody. Um, you know, put it in your journal. Anywhere. So that's it. And to do the string, obviously. These, like I said, I'm going to like put... I, oh, I know what I wanted to do on some of them. That's what it is. I want to stamp some of these little doilies that I got at Michael's. These were two, no, four. They're either two dollars or something, and or four dollars. They were seventy percent off, so thirteen dollars minus seventy percent is seven. Yeah, so I don't know how much that is. You can do the math while you can do the math. That is not mash. Well, I am doing this. And then put it down below. What you come up with. <laughs> he he. Okay, so I gotta get some ink out. I'm gonna go to my tried and true Heidi Swap. Oh no, you know what I was gonna do? I was gonna use, in my head, I was gonna use like a beige or a brown, but I think I'm going to do color. See how that goes first. I'll try pink first. I kind of got to go fast because I don't have a lot of ink, or I mean battery. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Ooh, isn't that pretty? I think I'm going to do different colors on them too. These are really cute. I'm glad I got this little thing. That's really cute. So they look like little toilies. So I thought. See, then I can kind of go over that. The little boo boo. And the little boo boo may not stick out so much. I think I'll avoid the ones that have that. For that very reason. And I don't, I really don't mind this on the back because, like I said, it's typewriting, it's homemade, it's, you know, flaws and all. But I think I will do some decorating on the back. And if I want to, these can be glued down, or, you know, in a journal. So I, these I'll do, keep myself. We went from about 89 degrees on Wednesday to 58 degrees yesterday with uh, um, humidity at, what was it, 93 percent. It was thundering and pouring and muggy while well, you were freezing your butt off. You know, and of course, all our winter clothes are put away, or you know, fall, long sleeve, but luckily I saved one, one long sleeve top. So I had that on, some capris, and I had flip-flops on, and then I, last second before I left the house, changed them to um, just some, you know, kind of tinny shoes, which was a good thing, because it was cold. And now it's getting back up to 76 today, supposedly. 
All right, then I'm going to try a different one. Oops. Too green. Try this one. Ooh, that's too blue. Maybe I'll just do the yellow. I don't want it to distract too much. So look at these. I mean, these started out, where's my little box? Well, you know how they started out. I don't know where that ended up. I don't know, but you know how they started out? Just the white little tags, and now they look like some cute little vintage dealies. Such a cool thing. Oh, that's cool. I gotta believe that's um, in response to Martin Luther King. We're inspired by. See how little this got, um, not too much coffee. Why in there? Too much. Hmm. Oh, on the back side, that's why. That's weird. So, then I can tie my strings. I will tie one, but you know how to tie them. I just keep these long because otherwise my little tiny fingers and my big fingers that hurt. My I was up all night after punching these. My thumb was so sore. So I'm gonna be doing these for There. Sweet little tags. So give it a try. They're, I love this woman's prose. It's so cool. And I'm, it's so nice. It's so pretty. Just very simple and sweet. So um, thanks for watching. Bye.